Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids, and in this video I just wanted to run you through what I do when I actually get a new system. Now, as you probably know if you follow my videos, my iMac went wrong, so for the last uh, week or so I've been using this Mac Mini with a 24 inch monitor, but I needed a new main system to replace the iMac, and I ordered up the 15 inch MacBook Pro that you can see sitting over here. Now, the only change I made to the MacBook Pro just very quickly to let you know is I upgraded the screen to the high res, so it's running at 1680 by 1050. Very pleased I did that. I'll show you a little snippet of what that looks like within this video. So I wanted to give you a look at what the 15 inch high res screen looks like. And this is with the camera roughly the distance you would sit back from the MacBook Pro if you were typing on it. And standard web page in Safari is more than readable. And as you can see the menus at the top of the screen again nice and crisp and readable as well so I don't see the font size being a real problem on this high-res 15 inch screen if I switch around to pages this is actually typing into a document using a 12 point font so again more than readable uh, if you're working this sort of distance from the screen I thought it was worth showing this because there's been a lot of discussion on the internet and on, on YouTube itself as to whether this 1680 by 1050 resolution was too much well in my experience I've had this about 24 hours now and I think it's perfectly readable and I'm glad that I opted for that extra resolution because it gives you quite a lot more screen real estate for your windows and palettes and I also upgraded the hard drive it comes with a standard 500 gigabyte hard drive I upgraded to the 7200 RPM hard drive and that's because I do a lot of video work so I think it's important to have that extra speed and in fact a requirement of some of the applications I use. Now whenever I get a new system regardless of the specification I always do the same procedure. Now what I do first of all and you have to excuse if my voice level dips but I'm going to have to face the MacBook Pro now is I always uh, partition the hard drive and that's because I do a lot of video work. So I do a 250 gigabyte partition for my MacBook Pro for the system and the applications and then I also do a 250 gigabyte partition for the video work. And with me taking video on and off the machine all the time I think that's important because I like to format this every now and again to give it a, a nice clean start. Then the next thing I do is a complete reinstall of the operating system I don't install any of the language translations because I don't need those so I install just the bare minimum components that I need and then I go through installing what I call my base applications and this is where you get a, a, an insight into what I use on my system so the applications I always install are as follows I install Google Chrome because that's um, just an alternative browser for me to use from time to time and I'm quite liking the experience there I also install Garage Sale because I do some eBay transactions and I use that for my listings. And then moving along to this right hand side, Final Cut Express I install for all of my video editing. I use Apple Pages, so I install the full iWork suite. I install Photoshop and Illustrator, although I only drag Photoshop down into my dock because I use that every single day. Also install Adium, which I use for my chat and I also ins install TweetDeck for Twitter then we've got your Jimbo which I use for uh, keeping all of my passwords and serial numbers ScreenFlow which is what I'm actually using to record the on-screen footage of this video Personal Backup X5 I use for doing my backups and then last but not least here you can see Suitcase Fusion 2 now when I've got all of those installed I activate them, put the serial numbers in etc uh, I also start my mail program so that all my mailboxes are um, working properly and I also make sure that I go into system preferences and set up mobile me so I've actually synchronised this uh, new MacBook Pro to my uh, mobile me account and that pulls down all of my contacts information and uh, all of my um, signatures for my emails etc my bookmarks for Safari so everything is as I would want it with a brand new system now there is one more application that I install and once I've got everything up and running and exactly how I want it I want a quick way of getting back to this system as it is so I install SuperDuper 
I'm going to show you how we get this up and running now. Now, if I launch SuperDuper, it comes up with a very simple to use control panel on the screen. And this allows me to create a clone of this MacBook Pro. And I do it in what I call a virgin state. So I've got everything running how I want it to. And I want to preserve that so that if anything did happen to the internal hard drive in the MacBook Pro, I can in fact just pop that hard drive out and put a new one in. Now what I'm using to do the backup is this little unit here. I haven't actually done a review of this on the channel yet. This is the um, Freecom, uh, I think it's called a Hard Drive Dock Pro. So this is a, a like a docking station and you can put three and a half inch or two and a half inch serial ATA drives into it. Uh, at the moment I've got a 500 gigabyte serial ATA, ATA drive here, a little two and a half inch one, and this is identical to the one that's in the MacBook Pro. So what I'm going to do is switch this unit on and I'm actually going to partition this drive exactly the same way as I've got on here and then I'm going to use that to create a clone of the uh, hard drive in the MacBook Pro. So if anything ever goes wrong, all I've got to do is just pop this hard drive straight into the machine. So let's uh, set this up and running. It's recognised the hard drive as you can see from the on-screen footage and it's asking me to initialise it. So I'm going to click initialise and this launches up disk utility and I can see the drive here which I select I'm actually going to partition it and select two partitions and go into options make sure it's on GUID partition table for both and these partitions here should be 250.05 gigabytes each and I'm going to call them exactly the same with one small change I've got MacBook Pro and then I'm going to add on the end clone. So I know it's a clone. And then here I'm going to call this video work. And then add on clone to the end on here as well. So that's that done. I'll click apply. And this is actually going to partition the two drives and format them to Mac OS extended journal format. And I'll just briefly uh, pause the video while this completes. So that's the formatting done on the hard drive that's in that Freecom dock. And now I'm going to go back into SuperDuper to set the backup going. So in SuperDuper, the um, actual source is MacBook Pro. So I'm doing a copy of MacBook Pro into MacBook Pro clone. So it's going to copy the internal drive on here, the 250 gigabyte partition, onto the first partition on the new hard drive. I can actually uh, do some different options here in the scripts, but what, what I want to do is actually back up all files. So checking options, there's just something I need to change in here which is before copy, I want to repair the permissions on my MacBook Pro, so I'm going to set it to do that. And I'm going to erase MacBook Pro clone first and then copy the file, so it's going to do a fresh erase, it's not really necessary, but I'll leave it to do that. I have got some options for what I want it to do when it's finished. But I'm going to just leave that to do nothing and then in the advanced panel there's nothing for me to change and then I click OK and then click on copy now I have to type in my password which is now done and click on OK and it's going to say I'm about to erase MacBook Pro clone which is fine because that's that new hard drive and I'm going to click on copy so what this actually does is it will uh, go through the process of making a bootable clone. Um, at, the, at the end here it says here after successful copy make MacBook Pro clone bootable which means that if that hard drive ever fails in the MacBook Pro I can just swap it out for this one I'm creating. Now I think not everyone's going to do this but for somebody who works in production so if you're serious about your work on your Mac this is a very good idea. I mean, certainly when I got the iMac, I did exactly the same thing, except that I made a bootable clone onto an external hard drive rather than one of these bare drives like you can see in the, the Freecom dock. So I did that with the iMac anyway, so that if that hard drive failed in the iMac, I could boot from that external drive. So it's a very worthwhile uh, procedure to do, and I always have used SuperDuper. It's a fantastic application. 
So anyway, that's uh, just a brief rundown what I do when I get a new system. I hope that's given you an insight into how I work. Thanks very much for listening. Please come back soon and check out more video reviews on the Geek and Noise channel. This video review is sponsored by EasyDraw, making drawing fun on Mac OS X.